Hi guys, so a lot of you wanted to have me explain Archimedes' principle and the buoyant force, and the two things are related, so I put them together. Let's start with the buoyant force. The buoyant force is that force that you feel when you're in water that makes everything in water seem lighter than it is on land. It's the upward push of the water particles on whatever's in the water. So if you take, um, like, a beach ball into the water with you, obviously it's going to float. Well, what's holding it up is literally little, you know, particles of water that are colliding with the beach ball, and sometimes they're pushing up on it. They're actually pushing in all directions, but also sometimes pushing up. So it's the motion of the water that allows it to lift an object. But you've probably noticed not all objects can be lifted in water. Some sink. So if you look at this picture I have down on the bottom, right here, I have this five Newton object. The object is being pulled down by gravity with five Newtons of force. And something has to hold it up against gravity. And in this case, it would be the water that's pushing against it. Well, not all the water that's in this container can be pushing on it. Only the water that comes in contact with the object is able to push on it. So here, for example, and here, and here, water is able to come in contact with that object and push against it. Now, the buoyant force is caused by the amount of water that's pushing on that object. Now think about how you could increase the amount of water that pushes on that object. The best way to do that would be to make that object actually take up more space. If I were to take that five newtons of whatever, let's say it's clay, and reshape it so that it looks more like a disc that's flat, like that, it would still have five newtons of force from gravity pulling it down. But now it might float because actually, look, there's a lot more space under it for water to push up against it. So the buoyant force, according to Archimedes' principle, is equal to the amount of water that's pushed out of the way by the object. So now look at the pictures on the top here. You can see over here, and this is in pounds instead of newtons, we have an object that I guess weighs um, seven pounds, right? Here's the little dial. And when we put it in the water, it appears to weigh less. Now it only weighs four pounds. Well, that's because the water actually had to be pushed out of the way. So some of the water that was here and here are the particles, got pushed out of the way and left through this little hole and came out over here. How much water got pushed out of the way was three pounds of water. Now, why is that? Well, that's because the object took up a certain amount of space, and that amount of space of water is what left. Don't get confused here. The object weighs seven pounds but it doesn't displace seven pounds of water. It only displaces three pounds of water. That's because the amount of water that get mo gets moved out of the way is equal to the volume of that object. It's the amount of space this object takes up that this water is equal to, right? So that water could weigh anything. So it weighs three pounds. So that three pounds of water is pushing back against the object. It's pushing up, which is why the object now weighs only four pounds. It used to weigh seven, but three pounds worth of water are pushing back on that object. If you look over here, here's an iron ball in this picture right here that sank. That same iron ball reshaped to look like the bottom of a ship will float, and that's because the iron ball would push less water out of its way than this shape would. Look at all the arrows that can fit underneath the boat shape compared to the arrows that can fit around that ball. So as a result, the water that gets pushed out of the way is much greater, so the buoyant force is much greater on this object than it is on this one. And that's Archimedes' principle and the buoyant force. See you guys in class.